bitches, we are back, Cheryl and me. <laughs> Hello, I know you were <laughs> waiting anxiously for Llewellyn, but I'm afraid <laughs> he's not with us anymore. He's moved away, so sorry, stuck with me tonight. And me. <laughs> and we had a bit of a shaky first show. <laughs> Oh my oh. gosh, we had a bit of some yeah. tongue-tied <laughs> moments there. But I hope you guys do enjoy life sciences, life sciences lesson. If you don't know, I'm Looney. She's Cheryl. I'm Cheryl, yes. yes. And what are we doing for the grade 11 today? Grade 11, we're starting with a new section of work today, and it's called population ecology. And I don't want to hear any groans. All right, mindsetters, <laughs> I hope you're excited for the lesson. Remember to hit us up on Facebook, on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And then our Twitter handle is at learn extra. And you can get all the show notes, the videos, and the schedules on learn.mindset.co.za. And if you want to get connected and win yourself, Bodicom Airtime and a Sony Xperia R, all you need to do is go to our Facebook page. All the competition details for the Get Connected competition are on our Facebook page. There are instructions there. And you just follow all the instructions. Instruction one instructs you to go to a curio page and you enter learn. You pick your favorite teacher from there. Once you've done that, you go back to our Facebook page and then if you've chosen Aslam, I'm saying Aslam Cheryl because you no, are I, there. I, I noticed so it Aslam in the first is, no, show. I've Aslam said is nothing. Pre representing the life sciences teachers. So, so we'll no, I don't say anything. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm okay. I'm okay. just going to get a tissue just now, but I'm fine. So if you've chosen Aslam and then you go to the link with Aslam's name, that link will take you to Aslam's picture. And then once you've done that, you like Aslam's picture and then go back to the competition graphic and share the post. If you've done all of that, all the people who've shared the, the competition graphic will stand a chance to win Vodacom Airtime. And then all the people who've liked Aslam's picture and then Aslam becomes a teacher with the most likes, you'll stand a chance to win a Sony Xperia L. So get connected. When you talk about all this Facebook stuff, I realize I'm such a dinosaur when it comes to Facebook. No, it's I fine. Really so it so they, know, they, know, they know what we're doing. They, they know all what know what I'm talking okay. about. Because <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I just <laughs> listen to you and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Grade 11s. We are starting a new section. And as I said, don't groan. I know most of you generally like the human anatomy and you groan when it gets to plants. All right. Nice. I think it's a nice, easy section. It's a section that makes sense. And I'm hoping you remember some of the things that you learned last year in grade 10 about ecology. Okay, what are we going to look at tonight? Very important. Please, please, please. Terminology, 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 terminology. I know you hate terminology. It's very, very important. Remember, biology sometimes is a different language. Yes, I know. But when it comes to understanding what you need, what the things that you need to be able to um, give in the questions, terminology is very important. Let's see what we're going to have a look at. Very important, most important. All right. The first thing you do, you need to know a definition of population. We're going to look at that. Remember, what are we looking at? Population ecology. What we're going to, quite some, I have to stuck to a bit of an introduction for. What we're going to look at, population ecology used to be called population dynamics. And what does it mean? A population, all right, a group an, of species, the same species living in an area, what happens to this population? A population can grow or a population all right, can die out. And what are the factors involved all right, in that? So there we go. So what characterizes a population? How do we see a population? Very important here, parameters. All right, as I said, terminology is important. What are the parameters of a population? If we are looking to see if a population increases or decreases, obviously we need to know how much they, how many they are, how much. Oh language terrible <laughs> how many they are so we need to be able to have a number to count how do we know it's increasing the numbers are increasing and then we're going to again terminology terminology what is this limiting factors what is this word carrying capacity and very important when it comes to this section graphs 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 all right, a lot of what we answered in the top, we can show or depict in a graph. Okay, chat, uh -huh. as I was saying, challenge question, All right. Over here, we have a graph, graph A below, represents the number of bacteria in a growth culture over a period of time. Now, as I said, now we're going to really start 
right, with the terminology, during which period I just want A, B, or C, did natality, and I'm going to give you a hint there, all right, excuse my handwriting, exceed, exceed is more, mortality, that's your death, all right, for many hours, and according to the pattern of growth during period B, okay, have a look, if you tell me here, how, why is that pattern, how do we get that pattern? But let's go and see if we go through the lessons. All right. The most important thing before you start anything. All right. Before you start anything, you can study. A good way to study is a mind map. All right. With all of the different terms, the most important term that you are going to. All right. Need is this because you're going to need it again next year when you look at um, evolution. NB, you know what, I really don't like orange. Pink for me is much nicer. There we go, much better. Okay, first of all, a population, you need to know the difference. Remember what we're saying? We're talking about population ecology. Right, so how does a population change? But we need to establish what is a population first. Okay, definition. A population is the total number of individuals of the same species. That is very important. We're talking about ex the same species. So here I'm going to say a giraffe. All right, my favorite animal. You can't have a giraffe at the zebra and impala. Those are not the same species. They're different. Okay? So a population is the total number of same species, giraffe, that occupy a specific area. Yeah, <coughs> Kruger Park. Okay, do you notice? It's not, it's within a defined area. It's not some here in the Kruger Park and others there in Namibia and others there somewhere along the coast or whatever. they within a defined area. Okay, so that's number one, same species. Number two, they live in a specific area. And number three, they must be able to interbreed, all right? They must be able to interbreed with each other. If they interbreed, all right, our numbers can then increase. You can't have, all right, this breeding programs and all of that. Those are not a proper population, okay? That is in a different environment. So then they're able to breed with each other, and we're looking at what they take at a specific time. Okay, so four, four things that you need to know, right? Same species, specific, defined area can interbreed, and we're looking at that particular population, right, at a particular time. Now, f again, few words, few terms, right, when we look at population. What does population density mean? Have a look here. We've got a nice little diagram. It's quite simple, right? This popular, this little leaf has got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, beetles, and I'm not even going to count. Much more than six. So what are we going to find? There is less dense, more dense. Now, if you think of the leaf, start let your mind thinking. More over there, less over here. What chance does the leaf have? All right. Also, different sex ratios. What do I mean by that? Okay, how many males to females do we have in the group? All right, generally, if we look at the animal kingdom, we generally do have more females than we do have males, all right? Females are the ones that are going to give birth. The male can obviously distribute his, all right, his, his seeds wherever he might go. Okay, and also what we might find is that Different populations might have right, different ways in which they distribute it. What you might find is that they might the distribution may be random. You might find the odd one here, the odd one there, right? or we might find them in a specific area. 
right, where they're all clumped together. Or we might find that they're in this area, they're in that area. All right, so where, they, where we find them, that also can, can make a difference, right, on the growth. Now, remember what we're saying. A population, we're looking at this population, same species, interbreed, specific area over a specific amount of time. All right, and what happens to this population? This population, its numbers are going to change. Okay, I need you to start thinking. Its numbers are going to change, and that's what we're going to look at. If the population gets bigger, what allowed it to get bigger? If it gets smaller, why did it get smaller? Okay, now those are what we call here is our first, right, parameters the parameters. The parameters of a population, all right, are the factors that determines the size. Okay, in simple terms, <coughs> in simple terms, if we have a look at this, my population can do two things, right? It can get more, increase in number, or it can get less. Those are the parameters. My parameters are my boundaries. What will make a population go more, all right, and what will make it get less? Let's see. Here we go. We see. What will make my population increase? If new, all right, members are born, all right, natality, right? So if I'm my increase in my birth rate, if I'm bringing new ones in, my population will increase. Okay? What else? Immigration. Always remember I for in. Okay? Immigration. What happens when I have other, all right, still the same species? Let's go, looking at my giraffe there. I've still got a giraffe. If a giraffe from another, all right, population comes and joins, into this one. What's going to happen? If I get somebody else in, my numbers are going to increase. Okay? How do they decrease? Obviously, some of my organisms are going to die. Mortality. If an organism dies, we lose a member. My numbers get less. What happens? Like for here, this little monarchy moved out of his into ours. So his number would have got less. Emigration, E is for exit, all right? Exit. What happens when members go out of that population group? My numbers are going to decrease. Population parameters, what, all right? They determine the size. Right, don't get confused. Later we're going to learn other words like limiting factors. That's different, okay? My parameters, there are four of them. There are four of them. Birth rate, death rate, all right? Natality, mortality, immigration, and immigration. Dying, being born, moving out, and moving in. All right, now... I'm not going to go into too much detail with the different ways. I need to now know, I've now said, let me put my pen down here. I have said that a population can increase or decrease. How do I know that? What do I need to know first? I need to know approximately, all right, how many are there to start with. Then if I follow them, all right, over time, then I can see the numbers decrease. So I've got a standpoint where I start with, okay? So for example, a couple of years ago, one of them, or a direct way in which you can do it, most of you, you might remember it, was a census, okay? A census. A census was a direct way in which people came to your house to count how many people were there, etc. what you had, what you didn't have, because what did our country need to know? What do we need to build? Where do we need to do things? Okay? So one of the ways is a census. So what that is what we call a direct. Okay? So if I count, there's Looney over there. All right, there's this one. There's that one. I look at it. It's a direct. I'm counting it. Okay. Now you need to think. 
if it's a direct way, all right, in which I can see Looney, she wants, okay, I'm going to say you're big, but you know what I mean by <laughs> that, you're big, all right? You're big, you're big, I can see you, you're easy. If I'm flying in a helicopter, I can see, oh, there's an elephant, there's an elephant, there's an elephant. So do you notice that it's going to be dependent on mostly the size of the individual, right? I am not going to go and count the number of ants. I'm not going to sit there going one and two and three ants. I'm going to use another method, right? So one of the ways in which I can count is one of that I can see is counting direct, and I can do that in a variety of ways. Okay, what I can do is I can sample. I'm going to see if I can show you a variety of ways here. I'm going to rather draw it. Okay. How's w some ways in which I can count? One of them, right, I can put traps. How about if I take a little plastic cup, I put it into the ground, and maybe icky, icky spiders, they fall in there. I can count, get an idea, right, that there are beetles here, what kind of beetles there are. I can get a rough number if a lot of them fall in my cup. I can then assume, okay, there's a lot. I can maybe set traps, right? I can put up sticky tape, right? And then all the little hoho keys fly in there. I don't really like these methods because shame, RMO things are going to die, all right? So all these sampling, I can check, or I can use the quadrant method. If you have a look over here, I take a piece of land and I divide it up into areas, right? And I randomly sample. I want to see how many daisies there are. So there's this amount of daisies here. There's this amount of daisies here. And by counting them, etc., I can get a general estimate of what I'm going to need. Okay, so when it comes to when it comes to counting individuals, all right, we it's not always easy, right, to just use the direct way. Some of the ways in which we're going to use, all right, and this is I'm going to go straight here. This is NB NB NB. All right. Please you need to know the mark recapture method. Now, as I said to you, Census, direct, easy, big animals. Now what happens if I want to go, I've got like this pond, all right, of water, and I'm wondering how many fish are in the pond, okay? I can't see them, they're underneath the water, right? But I want to get a general idea of how I'm going to do it. And how what we do here, as the name suggests, is we're going to capture the fish, we're going to mark them, we're going to put them back again, and then we're going to catch them again. I know that sounds a bit odd, all right? But there is a formula involved in which we're going to do that. So here, I'm not going to get a direct count, okay? They I can't see everything. I'm not going to get something direct. What am I going to do? I'm going to use an indirect method, right? And my indirect method is my mark recapture method, where... What am I going to So I want to know how much fish I have. So what do I do? Okay, this is important. All right, you need to know your formula. So what do I do? Here's my fish. I go and I fish, right, and I take 20 fish out. I catch 20 fish. Okay, and what do I do? I mark them. Now you need to think. When you mark it, what must you not do? Don't hurt it. Don't damage it. Make sure your mark doesn't come off. And then what do I do? I put all my marked back in again. Okay? All my marked back in again. And then I wait. Now, it must be a closed-off area. They can't go swim into all it's in my little dam here. It's right selected area. I wait for a couple of days. I don't go and catch it again. I want them to go mix and breed. You know, I don't want too much breeding either. I want them to mix. So maybe two days later, I go and catch more fish. And this time, all right, I catch 10 fish. I catch 10. See, number in my second sample. I caught 20 in my first, and I only caught 10 in my second. But what must I count in my second one? how many of them were marked, all right? And what do I find? 
five of them were marked. So 20 times 10 equals 200 divided by 5. All right, there are 40 fish in my dam. Are we going for a break? Because I see the time is zero. Okay, we are going to, to are a break. We going? Quick shout out to Njabulo, Vincent and Gift. And Ryan says we've posted something very special on our Facebook page. We want you to guess what Llewellyn did today. So I've got a few guesses here. I just want to read a few for Cheryl. Yeah. Scarabo says he did the ice bucket challenge. And no, then Diana s says he dyed his hair. And then Wendy says he came back to the studio. And then Jacqueline says... He went to Let's Art Sing Science Secondary School, and then Homozo says he was looking for an ecosystem in his garden. <laughs> <laughs> so, mine said, just keep your guesses coming onto that picture and right on our Facebook page. But dad is here. Didn't he dye his hair? We, we, they, they must guess. You must know guess. You know what he did, but they I must guess. I don't know. He hasn't got hair. <laughs> did they say dye hair? Yeah. Yeah, well, then they hasn't <laughs> got hair. Huh? <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. But let's see what you guys okay. come up with. And I know some of you are right, but we'll tell you a bit later on. So let's take a very quick break and we'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, Mindset is from that break. I'm not going to waste your time and talk and go on and on and on. <laughs> Let me talk and go yes. on and on and on. <laughs> okay, let's hit the terminology button again. All right, so we've looked at population. We looked at parameters, okay? We looked at ways in which we can determine the size, direct method, the census, indirect method, the quadrant method, all right, or traps and those kind of things, but most important, the mark recapture method. Now the next, all right, the next two words, very important. First one, all right, is limiting factors. In other words, if I look at, now listen, often listen to what the, what the, what the term says, okay? Limiting factor, what is going to stop all right, my population from just growing and growing and growing and growing. Those will be my limiting factors, okay? So now what we have a look, all right, here we go. What's going to stop them? Competition. How does competition? If you compete, you have one winner and you have a loser, okay? One, the winner, all right, is going to go on. But what happens about the loser? What happens if two males fight for dominance? One is going to win. What happens to the other one? He usually has to go and find another place, all right? Another herd, another pride, etc. So what happens to my numbers? Do you see? They're going to start. If I have to compete, if I've got lots and lots and lots of cattle, right, on one little, little piece of ground, they're all going to compete for that little piece of ground. Some are going to feed, some are going to starve. What happens if they starve? They die. What happens to my population? Decreases. Okay, predation. Predator prey. Predator hunts and kills, right? That's what it is. A predator hunts and kills. What does it do? What happens when it kills? What happens to that organism? It gets eaten. It's gone, all right? If you've got a lion that attacks an impala, the impala numbers will go down because it's been eaten. Okay, diseases. Right, Ob obviously, we have a look now, Ebola, right? Have a look at the diseases, right? Large numbers of people, it's easier to transmit if a disease can carry on. Again, in the in animal population, right? If your animal gets a disease, it's much easier. There's lots of them for them to carry on. Now, okay, those are, listen carefully, limiting factors. What is going to limit? What am I going to compete for? Food. I'm going to compete for shelter. I'm going to compete for space. And if I'm a plant, I'm going to compete for light. All right. So competition. Predator. One's going to eat. One's going to be eaten. Disease. Can get sick. All of these things are going to cause my numbers to decrease. Okay. Those are my limiting factors, not my parameters. Parameters, natality, mortality, immigration, okay, and immigration. Okay, so limiting factors now. 
some of the limiting factors now that's okay so that's term important now we differentiate between the two we've got density dependent all right and we've got density independent density dependent means remember what we said about density how many animals are there present okay so now i have got this nice little rugby field okay and i have got one little sheep on this rugby field and i've got hundreds of sheep on my other rugby field what's going to happen this little one sheep Lots of food, lots of space, lots of water. It's going to survive nicely. Give him a little female sheep and they'll even make little lambs, okay? On this side over here, what have I got? I've got lots, density increases. I've got lots and lots and lots of sheep. What are they going to do? They're going to compete for food. They're going to compete for mates. They're going to be for space, water, you name it. Remember what I said, when there's lots of competition, all right, disease can get lots of competition, things are going to die. Now, what, what happens to their numbers? They get lower. Why are they getting lower? Because they are so big. Right, their numbers are so big that they're not able. All right, they're competing, and what's going to happen? Lots are going to die. Okay, now we both here, we're again on a little rugby field, one little, all right, one little sheep on this field, a whole lot of, whole herd of sheep on this field. And what happens? Natural disaster strikes, and we have a flood. All right. What happens to the sheep that's by himself? He's going to drown. What happened to the sheep where there were lots of them? They're going to drown, okay? Density independent. What does that mean? It doesn't matter if it's a small amount or if it's a big amount. Natural disasters, fire, earthquake. I could have said a volcano erupted, all right, and burnt the sheep. And it wasn't because there was a large population it was fate, all right? It was just a natural occurrence. And what happened to their numbers? Bye-bye one little sheep, bye-bye whole herd of sheep. They all die, all right? And it's got nothing to do with how many they are. Just wrong place, wrong time. Okay, so we have density dependent, and then we have density independent. Now, the next word, very important, carrying capacity. Okay, what does that mean? Quite simply, right here I've got all the producers, plants. All right, here's my little given area. What can they do? They can only provide food for a certain amount of animals. If I have a five liter bucket, the only amount of water Right, that I can, the most amount of water that I can carry is five. I can't carry more than five. It's going to spill over. It's going to be wasted. The same thing happens here. An ecosystem all right, or an area has got a carrying capacity. It can only all right, sustain a certain amount of animals. When the animals exceed that carrying capacity, what are they going to do to the environment? They're going to destroy it. There's no food. If there's no food, what happens to those animals there? They die or they move on. Does my population numbers change? Yes. And when they die and they move on, what does that give my... All right, hopefully, what happens to my area? It can regrow. Okay, so a carrying capacity is the amount of producers, all right, that can sustain a certain amount of organisms. It's quite simple, all right, uh, as, as I said, a five liter bucket. Okay, now, when we have a look at this population growth, two, there are two very, very, very important graphs that you need to know. Because we are now, as I said to you in the beginning, we use graphs as a way to show how a population, how it grows, okay? There are two types. There are two types. The first one, all right, is the logistic graph. Some of you might be taught it as the S-shaped graph. 
these are usually organisms that we call a higher order of organisms, right, where there's lots of parental care, all right, like us, buck, all right, lion, etc. Okay, so what happens is, if we have a look, and this is very important, you need to need to know each of the phases. Okay, when we look at this graph, okay, it ha tells you this is over a certain period of time. Here tells me my number. What do I notice? If you will follow the graph, let me choose a different color. There we go. This tells me a story about my population. Okay? It tells me something. The very first phase, A, right, is called lag phase. Now, do you notice there, population numbers are quite low. It's just before the num population numbers are going to take off. What would be the reason there? Basically, climatization. They are young. What can be characteristic here? Let's see. They are young. All right, they haven't reached their sexual maturity yet. All right, what else? Okay, they're getting to know the environment, getting used to the environment. And what do we notice here? If I use the words, okay, we have increase in natality and we don't have too many deaths. Decrease mortality. Because what do you notice? My numbers are starting to increase. Phase number B, all right, we can divide into two. Here is referred to as my exponential growth phase. Okay, number one here, exponential growth. What does exponential mean? It doubles. Right, what here? What happens to my numbers? I have lots of little ones being born. Why? What do they have a lot of? They have a lot of food, they have space, they have water. In other words, what has not kicked in? The limiting factors. The carrying capacity is great. They have everything they need. There's enough mates, there's, enough, there's not this amount, large amounts of competition. And what we're doing? We're giving birth. All right. Little ones are being born. Little ones are being born. Little ones are being born. Right. And because we don't have all these limiting factors, what do I have? Very little. All right. Mortality. Then what do you notice over here? All right. What do we start to see? All right decrease. Now if I had to draw a dot, let me make that another color. That would be my carrying capacity. Right, because what happens over here when they hit the carrying capacity? What's going to start to happen? You're usually going to see your graph is going to do that. What starts to come into play? Limiting factors. They start competing for food, for space, for shelter. When they start competing, what happens? My numbers are going to decrease. So what starts to happen here? A decrease in natality and an increase in mortality. So more starting to die. All right. Now, two things can happen to my population. And I actually want phase C. All right. That is my stabilizing or my stability all right what do you notice here that's exactly what you want you want your population to fluctuate around the carrying capacity L increase we have a little bit of a dip then we get back again a little bit of a dip get back again that's a sign of a stable population all right go down we recover we go down we recover all right what happens if this line all right, I'm going to use a different color. goes down like that. 
that's an unstable population because what could happen over here right they could become extinct so what you need to know please very 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 important know the labels for each of the phases and the characteristics why is what is happening at each phase in the beginning settling in right Li decrease limiting factors, lots of births, very few deaths. Then we hit our carrying capacity, our limiting factors. Okay? Do you listen to the terms that I'm using? All the ones I used previously. Okay? And then what do we want to do? Equilibrium. All right? Stabilizing equilibrium. We want it to go all right, just on that carrying capacity. We don't want to go down. Then you have another growth curve. All right? And we usually example over here all right is your bacteria and your and your um, your small microorganisms etc have a look here it is called your geometric and some of you might call it your j-shaped growth curve okay now what happens is do you notice same phase lag same phase exponential then look what happens huge okay it cannot go it doesn't have the stabilizing effect right what's going to happen say for example you've got that little piece of cheese in your fridge one day you see there's a little bit of bacteria a little bit of fungus or whatever growing it's green and it's a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and as it goes on right the bacteria get more and more and more and more what's going to happen after a while the bacteria are all going to die. Why? Because all the food is finished, all the oxygen is finished. Um, what have they done? There's so much waste. So what do we do? We don't find the stabilizing effect. They all die off. What happens? We have this exponential growth, and they usually all die off. Okay. So please, NBNB, be able to notice and be able to see which graph is which. You'll see if we get to the questions that very often you'll get ask ah here we get to the questions okay over here believe it or not all right this is yeast okay yeast is a fungus you should have known it because you did respiration this year all right here's yeast okay and we know that it can reproduce asexually by budding now if you have a look here in an experiment yeast cells were grown in a glucose solution in a test tube and kept at a temperature of 30 degrees nice warmish good for growth okay every two hours a drop was taken from the mixture and examined underneath the microscope the number of cells per unit area was counted the results of the experiment are shown in the table okay have a look here all right time every two hours ha oh, yeast all right number of yeast cells what do you notice just looking at the graph all right over time what happens my yeast grows exponentially right draw a line graph to illustrate these results when we draw a graph most important thing your axes remember which is on okay what's going to be on my x-axis time independent variable oh we've gone back to orange don't like orange okay time oopsie what do we have over here let's go back and generally in a graph independent variable is always in the first column dependent variable and you must have your units of measurement so it's number of Oh, that went a bit wobbly. Okay. Number of yeast cells per unit area. Okay, and then you start. This is a nice one because it's there for you. Zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 18 and time we forgot to add units of measurement what was time in all right the number cells the results of okay we're taken from the mixture every two hours okay important because it's not minutes see me and the smart board 
right, hours. So I go and I plot. Okay, let's go. Two, zero, there was ten. Okay, there's zero. We start here. Let's see what a nice one. Well, now you have to be careful here. I need to go all the way up to 650. I think the best would be if I go up in the hundreds. 200, 300, all right, 400. I'm just going to start there. So at num it was 10. So what do we do? You plot, all right, on the line over there. Then you go back, and for each one, then the next one, it was 30. Okay, two hours, and you're going to plot, and at each line, you should notice that. Okay, let's have a look at that graph. You should be thinking, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know exactly. Here we go. On your graph, indicate the lag phase, the exponential growth phase, and the stable phase. All right. So you would have come to an end over there because the last were fairly similar. Lag phase in the beginning. Exponential. And then you're stabilizing. Okay, it's time for a break. Yeah. My feet are getting sore. I should have worn flat shoes today. I didn't realize two hours. Yes, you stand. <laughs> mm. So hours. you can still sit. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm special. Oh, I know that. <laughs> Mine said to the argument, take a break. Congratulations to all of you who guessed that Llewellyn dyed his hair today. And he also visited a mindsetter who won the assist tablet from the Winter School competition, Refula Soboko. He visited that mindsetter at her school and gave her her tablet. So congratulations to all of you guys. It was just a fun thing to see if you guys were tuning in last week when we gave him the nice and easy. So he came through and he did dye his hair. So let's take a very quick break and we'll see you straight after this. <laughs> Welcome back, my sisters from the break. You see Cheryl, now she oh, wants to explore that it. I'm very short. I'm tall. And you're tall. So we want to show you the pictures of Lou and his transformation. So this is the before picture. Oh, this is a good angle. You don't actually <laughs> see how little hair he actually does have. <laughs> and then he went through the process, nice and easy. Remember, we gave him nice and easy. Then that's him dyeing his hair. And there's the color. And there's the final product of Llewellyn. With the, what was the color? Oh, copper. Copper, yes. Copper. With the copper Just a hair. nice way to say it's red. And then, there this is go. the mindset that won the assist tablet from the winter school competition. So Lou was very busy today, being a learning extra life, ambassador, going around the schools, and visiting the mindset at the school. So Cheryl. You can carry on with your lesson. You just want me to go away so that you can look tall no. again. No! <laughs> yes. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite short, but she's even it's shorter. No, it's your shoes. I always say this. You wearing... <laughs> yes, you see? I'm okay, still yeah, she's still, It's fine. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. I suppose we have to get back to the serious stuff. All right. First of all, we asked the question. We gave you this yeast question, all right, and it's a bit difficult trying to go back, but the most important thing, and they told you, we drew a line graph, all right, and from the graph, you should have noticed, as I said to you, you must be able to label the phases. You must be able to see, is it a geometric, is it logistic, and the characteristics that go with that, okay? So we drew the line graph, that's a lovely skill that you need to have. Remember what what, uh, I've got, we've got four minutes, you know, James, I've got like whispering in my ear. <laughs> Don't forget to add, please, a line graph, a heading, all right, showing, and you must have both of your variables in, the growth of yeast, all right, over time, and let's quickly, we're going to, we're going to do like fast forward here, all right. And I've said to you, on your graph, you had to label those three. Right, describe the shape of the graph. And now we're gonna it's very simple, it's a J-shaped graph. Okay, we often refer to it as a J-shaped graph. All right, now now you're gonna have your math things on. It says during which time period did the greatest increase in the number of yeast cells occur? Now you have to look here. All right, ten to thirty, seventy, three hundred and fifty to five hundred and fifteen. 
if you look at it, I would have say, so this is double, all right, 175 plus 175 is 30. 350 to 450 is 100. All right, so here, if we have a look at this time period, my mass is not very good. So if we have a look, three, I'm going to do it over here. 515, 350. I know I've got a calculator. I must use the calculator. Never used it before. There we go. What did we have? Oh, cook. No, sorry. I've got it. My, my memory is fading. 515 minus 350. 515 minus 350 equals, okay, 165. No. So the greatest amount of growth occurred, all right, where? Between the 6th and the 8th hour, all right? Which time period between the 6th and the 8th hour? Okay, then... After six hours, there are 175 yeast cells per unit. How long does it take to double it? All right, and we said over here, doubled. So how long did it take? It started at six and it doubled by the eighth hour. So it took two hours, all right, two hours in which to double. Now the last question why do you think the growth rate of the population slowed down? All right. The reason why it slowed down, what did I say to you? What does it hit over here? Limiting factors. So what did it have? Shortage, and it just says you. Why do you think? All right. Shortage of food, space, all right, oxygen, etc. Is that us? Or must I can I do? Or are you going to talk, or what are we going can to I do? Can I talk you very can quickly? Talk. You can talk. You usually do talk very quickly. <laughs> Wine setters, I just want to congratulate Evans. Jabadi, you have won yourself the Cassia Calculator from the Test Yourself competition. Mine setters, I have posted all the information for the Test Yourself competition on our Facebook page. And remember, if you don't get through any of oh, you're not going to get through any of your questions, please visit learn.mindset.co.za forward slash help desk to send your questions through there. There is a post of, of, of all the information about all the other Learn Extra help desks we have. And remember, the Learn Extra Life Sciences help desk is proudly brought to you by Excel. Do you want to say something else? No. <laughs> have a wonderful <laughs> evening. I'm now going <laughs> to go home. Done. Two hours, Two hours. I'm now absolutely, totally exhausted. I hope you weren't too disappointed that Llewellyn's not back. All right, somebody else. I'm afraid somebody has to fill in two his shoes, but as you can see, he had a wonderful day. That short little amount of hair that he has is now um, copper, and uh, as we said, we're sad to see him go, but things happen, hey? All right. Thank you so Pleasure. much, Cheryl, Thank for you, the Lumi. awesome lesson mindset is at home. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, goodbye.